Welcome back to another episode of Talks Against the Grain. How are you, Trutha? I'm doing well, man. How's it going? It's going well over here. Trying to get a little cold in Texas, but we're maintaining. <laughs> so our first topic at hand is, have political differences limited the church's outreach? I want to kick us off today and say that most definitely, uh, I have always felt that political differences have uh, limited the church's outreach, especially if you're a politician. I've noticed that it's, if you're like a politician within, um, you know, the church and you're preaching your side, your agenda, your political affiliation, um, guess what? There will be some division and that will limit your outreach because people are going to say, well, how can you be a Christian but believe in this policy? You know, you've got a bunch of people like that out there. And I think that it's limited it because now you don't have the full autonomy um, as a politician of reaching everyone with the gospel. And so uh, with me and you being ordained ministers, you know, we've sort of and not politicians of any type of affiliation, you know, as of now in our life, um, you know, we have the full obligation of preaching the gospel and the gospel uh, for the, the most part of our messages. And so when people um, think of limit how it's limited churches outreach. Um, I just think that it has gotten to a point where because th there's two main parties, you have uh, Democrat and Republican as far as the main parties go. And, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, well, you know, if I'm this way, well, guess what? The other side is going to attack me. If I'm this way, the other side is going to mm -hmm. attack me. And so I, I, I do believe that there will be um, some people affected in this um train of thought and so i you know you mentioned it one time truth in how you're glad you're not a politician because we were having some we were trying to we, we were talking about some topic here and you were like man that's why i'm glad i'm not a politician you know what i'm saying and it's and a part of me is the same way it's like man these people are going to be persecuted on whichever stance they take mm -hmm. they can take the stance of anything and they're going to be persecuted whether it's right or wrong and so um, my stance is yeah I think the church's outreach is limited um, and so that's why I dare challenge everyone to seek more of God's face um, rather than um, you know political affiliations that's that's my personal thoughts I'm gonna hand it over to you though yeah man I agree I completely agree um, just to answer specifically so have political differences limited the church's outreach? I would say yes, because what political differences does is it puts us in a us against them type of mentality. So quick scripture that I'm going to go to is in the book of the Acts and it's chapter one. And I thought I always thought this was powerful. And this was where my first conviction when it came to politics came from when it came to like as far as not allowing the political differences, political opinions, so on and so forth to impact my ability to reach people. And so Acts chapter one, verse seven says, um, let's see, is that the passage? Yep. That is actually verse six. When they therefore were to come together, they asked of him, him being Jesus saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the othermost part of the earth. And why this is important to me is the disciples, the apostles, they wanted Initially, their mind still was consumed in the children of Israel getting back the kingdom. They wanted back control because they were under the uh, leadership and the, being dominated by the Romans. The Roman Empire had taken over. So they're like, when is the kingdom going to be back restored? And Jesus gave this profound response that it's not for you to know the times in which the father will restore these things. It's not for you to know. And really what he was getting at, if you really study it out, is that. It's not 
your focus. That should not be your focus. But what he turned them to is the power of the Holy Spirit that he was going to give them, because that was going to be the most important thing for them to focus on was receiving the spirit. And once they have the spirit, how that spirit is going to make them powerful witnesses. It was going to give them the power to witness all across the world, the gospel. And so when we think about political differences, we may have our differences. Some of the disciples were very avid, you know, really into politics. They were political zealots of that time and they followed Jesus. And so they were able, think about how many of them were able to put aside political differences. They probably had political differences with other disciples and people they came in touch with. But you don't see that throughout scripture. You don't see that throughout scripture, especially when they were filled with the spirit. But they learned that the focus, and it's not to say that we can't have political ideologies and thoughts about things. But when we put those above what we're called to do, when we put those above witnessing and being a good witness, or when we put those, when we mix those into our witness, like if you're a Democrat, then you're not saved. We try to throw random things out there. Or, you know, if you're a Republican, you're overly religious, or if you're conservative, you consider yourself conservative or whatever you these titles and things are. When you get too caught up in those things, now you're starting to other, other you make people the other, make them the enemy or make them mm -hmm. something that, should be someone that should be attacked or looked at as an, you know, who you are against. And so it's been many people that vote Democrat that are against abortion. There are many people that vote Republican and are against systematic racism. It's been many people that are liberal, but don't believe in things that other liberals believe in as far as like that con contradict or come against scripture. So gotta be very careful that, we not allow our political differences. Really, our political differences should be within us at the end of the day. Like, I get abortion. I get a lot of those other things. But I think we can't allow ourselves to get distracted from our main goal, which is witnessing. What do you think about that? Yeah. Um, as a Christian and not a politician, well, as a, sorry, as a minister who has no political affiliations, yes, that's my main objective is to get the gospel out by any means necessary. Um, and, you know, it, it's one of these things where, you know, like how you mentioned scripture, you know, it, it says, even the, the religious people in that time, you know, the Jews of the highest of the Jews, the high priest, they looked at Jesus and they said, look, there he is sitting with sinners and publicans. So they looked at these political affiliations as people who were more, you know, I'm not going to call them sinners, but they, they looked at them as organizations that were um, not religious, right? You know, not pleasing to the father in their eyes. And so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of these things, like, it's really hard, especially in today's society, it's going to be super hard. And we've got to make sure that we are on, we are sensitive. To, I mean, and, and the unfortunate thing is it puts us in positions where if we want to be so nice about it, if we want to be so sincere about, or uh, so, um, you know, like sensitive about it. We, for people that have certain political affiliations, they almost can't even go to certain places um, mm -hmm. out of fear of how they'll be perceived mm -hmm. or out of fear of if they're going to harm someone. Because if a Republican goes to, a, you know, a, a liberal school or, a, you know, a super leftist school, uh, you know, in higher education, that's going to be tough. And I've seen it. We have these preachers that go on campus mm -hmm. and they, you know, preach the, the campus down and, 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 and then there's, you know, and, and I don't really consider them Christians, but they go to these campuses and they tell people they're going to hell if they're in sin. They're going to hell if um, they smoke cigarettes. They, you know, this, 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 you know, pointing out specific things that people are right. going to go to hell over instead of preaching the love of Jesus. And so unfortunately yeah it's placed us in these positions where we have to watch where we go we have to watch what we say we have to be super cautious over every little thing we do and um i think that's 
I think that's where the division comes in. And I think that's where um, and I and I believe that is why the pulpit, I believe this is why the church should be solely representative of the things of the Lord. And I know I may get some flack over that I, because, you know, it's thinking like, man, well, how do you not preach politics in the church? Well, it's because the church is where the gospel is to be shared, you know, exactly. The church is not where I go to get, you know, different recipes for foods that I want to make. The church is not where I go to to learn how to play basketball. The church is where I go to get the gospel. And I believe the gospel should be preached um, in that vicinity and in that space. No, that was good. I completely agree. Um, Yeah, the biggest thing I think where people are going to struggle is, you know, okay, well, what is a political ideology then? that I can talk about or like, is there ever a situation where like I would want to? So like, a, like abortion is a little bit more of a gray area one because it's, we're talking about life and death. And so when you're talking about you know, a baby dying or so on and so forth, that gets a little dicey. So I understand the whole pro-life pro-choice thing coming up at times. I do understand that. Uh, I would say just using wisdom in it, if someone sincerely is, it's one of those things where like, if no one's asking you the question, don't give answers to questions nobody's asking. So if no one's talking about, if no one's asking about gay marriage or no one's asking about, you know, abortion and things like that, don't just be so quick to be like, oh, I am so against baby killers. I'm so against you know pro-choice. If no one's asking you about the matter, it's no need for us to have to go out and be so out front, if there's no prompting that leads to it, then we don't have to. I'm not saying if someone comes to you and asks you about it, don't talk about it. You should, because that's not necessarily a political belief, but that is a biblical belief. So there are some biblical principles that politicians have co-opted and apparently have taken the autonomy to be able to be the, we are the Christian political party, like the Republicans or the Democrats, we are the social social justice party. And so it gets a little bit dicey at times with these conversations. But no, I don't look at it that way. I don't look at either as just one or the other. I look at it as, no, there's some nuance in perspective. And some of these things are going to sound like talking points at times from Democrats or Republicans. But the biggest thing is not just being so quick to just throw out these things just for the sake of throwing it out. And so that's really, I think, the advice that I would uh, end with. It's just not just throwing out all your political ideologies just for the sake of doing it. And no one asks or no one has asked a question in the church about it.